Welcome back to Olympics Daily, the FT's video roundup of everything that's happening in and around the Games. Now, we've already had a week of high drama and nail-biting finishes, but this weekend the action moves up a gear as the athletics take from the starting blocks and focus shifts to the stadium at the Hearty Olympic Park. But with me to discuss how the first week has fared is Simon Cooper. Simon, um, we've already bestowed on our early Team GB medal winners the unofficial status of national hero. Are we putting a bit too much pressure on our athletes? I think the athletes put pressure on the athletes. I mean, these people have spent years and years preparing for this. And your future is decided often in three minutes, one throw, whatever it is. And so you feel for someone like Victoria Pendleton, the British cyclist who rode magnificent times and then was disqualified on a technicality. And so the pressure for these people is almost unbearable. They all sleep very badly the night before. They are often in tears, even big rowers. They don't want to do the event. I mean, that pressure is there. And part of the years of training is that you can ride your bike or throw your javelin the same whether it's on an empty training field or in front of 80,000 people. You perfect the skill until it is natural. Of course, uh, stress levels couldn't have been much more than for Tajir Kabaliev, who is the Russian judo champion, who yesterday was performing in front of President Putin, no less. Well, Putin is not only an unforgiving man, but he's also, I think, a bit of a martial arts expert himself. So, yes, that would not have been a very easy thing to do. Luckily, the man won gold, yes. and then there was a lot of man-hugging with Putin afterwards, so I think he got through that one unscathed. Lucky for him. Uh, Simon, what's your tip of the day? Well, A, avoid the javelin train from uh, St Pancras this morning, because apparently the queues are 45 minutes long. As the athletics gets underway, the number of people going to the stadium has doubled. To 200,000 or something. Yes, I mean, today is the busy day, the day that the Olympics really takes off. Hitherto, you've been able to walk quite quietly, calmly through Olympic Park, won't happen anymore. It's it's going to be a madhouse. Mm -hmm. In terms of sport, I'd love to see Andy Murray, who hit a few balls at me last year, which was an unforgettable experience, beat Djokovic at Wimbledon to uh, get to the final. Maybe he'll win an Olympic gold before he wins a Grand Slam. And then one to watch out for, very interesting one, a British women's football team play in Coventry in front of a sold out house probably against Canada in the quarter final. If they get to a semi, probably against the US, which is a highly hyped, exciting team, that could really kickstart women's football in this country. Excellent. Okay, well, today's photo finish is this one taken yesterday by Charlie Bibby, our photographer in the velodrome. Um, this is Team GB cycling, obviously one of our high hopes. Um, we broke four world records uh, yesterday. Um, really gets a sense of the speeds we're achieving, doesn't it? Yeah, and the wonderful geometry that sport makes. This is like a Cartier-Bosson photograph. I really like it. Um, yes, I mean, track cycling has taken off in Britain in a way nobody could have expected. So Chris Hoy, the British flag bearer at the opening ceremony, won his fifth gold yesterday. And, you know, what was once a sort of popular French sport of the 1920s, completely unknown in this country, is now a national obsession here. Simon, thank you. Um, we're going to be back after the weekend uh, when we will have had the tennis finals, as Simon was mentioning. Will it be a repeat of Wimbledon with Roger Federer facing down Andy Murray? Join us then to find out.